Hey guys, it's PC Purrs and I'm back. I know it's been a while. Um, yeah, but we're back. New do, new set, new everything for our new series. We're about to do P-Valley season two. So come on in, we're gonna talk about it. So for those of you who are new to my channel, I'm PC Purrs, Pussycat Purrs, and I'm a pole instructor, pole enthusiast, pole competitor, dancer, all of that and above. And what we do here is we talk about how pole is showing up in pop culture and like film, television, music videos, et cetera, et cetera. Product reviews, tutorials, all that in the third. So we did Jocelyn's Cabaret before, now we're on to P-Valley. It starts off, we see a guy and his family, there's a birthday party going on for his little kid and he's done for the night with it. He leaves and we see him driving. He comes to a fork in the road. He can either go to Mercedes mom's church or he can go over here to Uncle Clifford's spot. We see a girl holding a sign, you know? And the car wash says, you know, live girls, titties, hot wings. So it's pretty much, you know, easy choice for him. So we see him go over there and he goes to this car wash that is, you know, Everything is affected by the pandemic. So it's a super smart way to handle having girls and the pandemic and still make your business run. So they're featuring Mercedes and she does some pretty cool tricks on the pole. You know, there's girls all lined up. There's some in cages. They're doing the sexy dancing. They come out, they twerk on the cars while they're cleaning it. When the guy leaves, he gets some, some wipes <laughs> and some wings on the house. I don't know if y'all can afford to give it out a full roll of like Clorox and some wings for free. But all right, we get the point. It's still a show here at the Pink and they, they figured out a, made, a way to make it work. So after we get introduced to the new world of the Pink, we see Mercedes and she's got a wig off, cornrows going on and she's dealing with a shoulder injury. And then it's funny cause she throws the wig right back on and I'm always telling you, you don't want your wig that loose. I did a whole video about how to secure your wig. I'm gonna leave a link to that one in case you missed that one, but too much glue is a problem. And also just not tacking it down. You don't want your wig that easy to come off cause it will fly off if you bust a fast spin on the pole, hang upside down, it's easy to get tanked. Like you need to secure that thing down. But we see that Mercedes is upset because her cut of the money is very, very small and you know, Everybody is basically struggling, except for Mississippi. We see her um, on the phone, like the girls are watching her on the phone, and she's doing really well. She's at home doing her thing. So things have very much changed for everybody with this new world that we're in. And then we see Uncle Clifford and uh, Autumn speaking. I don't know why I always want to call this girl Winter. Uncle Clifford and Autumn speaking, and of course their relationship has changed because he's no longer just her employer because she's the owner of the pink essentially so their dynamic is very different I and mean, she gave uncle clifford two hundred fifty thousand dollars and now he's down to twenty five thousand dollars so she's asking what happened to the money and she's realizing that now she's got to come up with a plan because uncle clifford is just things are just going awry so then we keep getting updates on the characters and we go back to andre the one that was messing around with autumn last season and He's at home while his wife is a COVID nurse and she's at work. And some of the things she's asking him to get during the day, he didn't get. And she's coming home very stressed out after a day of watching people die. And she's very, very germaphobic. But then he gets a call that Tydell has passed away and they want him to come home. So we know he's going to go back and probably start, start something up with uh, Autumn again. So that's in the work because we see the marriage still isn't solid. Then again, briefly, we see Mercedes' mom and she's still doing things with the church and she's doing work to pass out supplies during COVID. So we see that she's still trying to gain favor of people in the neighborhood, still trying to work with them, but we already know that she's a very complicated person. So then we go back to Lil Murder and we see that he's like still trapping. He's still living, you know, not comfortably, not where he wants to be. He did, you know, he's got some notoriety, especially with Keyshawn, but their realities at this point are very different. She's doing fine at home, making content online because we know adult work did really well during the pandemic, especially in the beginning when people were afraid to leave their home still. But um, he can't tour without her. He can't really do much without her. So, you know, so he's 
at home trying to make beats and he's we see that he's very creative very talented he's gotten a lot better at making music but he needs to come up with something but he's also you know lovesick he still wanted uncle clifford but trying to keep him a secret so he's got his own things going on he goes outside at one point he goes outside and he thinks that someone is watching him like maybe getting ready to attack him and there is someone in the car watching him but really they're just wanting new music so he's got to figure out what his next plan is going to be <laughs> next we see that autumn and mercedes are roommates and their relationship still isn't like their buddy buddy i maybe frenemies frenemies you could call them i guess but mercedes is <laughs> masturbating really really loud and annoying autumn and they try to watch a movie together but autumn wants new girls in mississippi i'm sorry yes autumn wants new girls but mercedes doesn't want that she's like, there's not enough money to go around you want to hire new people and we already aren't making money so they're thinking two different ways mercedes is thinking of it from the position of a dancer and Autumn is thinking about it as a business owner. As a business owner, if I have maybe more girls in here, they can do more things. We've lost some, especially some that are talented. Maybe we can get more people in to, to see it. So we'll see what happens with that. So when we do the catch up with Keyshawn, AKA Miss Mississippi, we see that she is still with her boyfriend. He's still controlling and abusive, but she's making easy money at home. She just logs in online. You know, she's got a manager that sets things up for her. So she's having a, a decent time during this uh, pandemic, except for the fact that she's stuck in the house with the crazy boyfriend and he does not want her to leave. And she's telling him, oh, you know, things will get better and then I'll be able to go back to work. And he's like, no, 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 you can stay home and work, which would be even worse for her. She's, she'll never be able to escape. So that's a problem. When we see Mercedes by herself talking to the girls from her school, we see that she's in a predicament because her school hasn't been built. The girls most likely won't be coming back anytime soon because some parents can't afford it. Some are afraid of the pandemic. It's just a lot going on. So what is she going to do for the money? That's a big thing. Next, we start introducing a spiritual element to this show. And it's funny because everybody was like, is this the new True Blood? And you know, they have the Uncle Clifford character that reminds a lot of people of Lafayette from True Blood. I don't know if you guys watched True Blood. It was a great show. I read the books too, it was very... <sighs> All right, we're not talking about that. But um, Uncle Clifford is working on the room that got destroyed last season. And what they're doing is installing these aerial poles, which is really cool because I'm starting to learn aerial poles. So you guys will get a chance later on to see me like struggling trying to learn this new stuff, but it's lots of fun. But they're installing aerial poles and the room is very cold and they're still trying to cover up blood stains and it's just an eerie feeling in there for people and some of these little elements are going to keep popping back up next we see little murder talking to his manager in a funeral home and they were talking about how they're just not doing well at this point and the manager is saying we need to get mississippi to come on tour with us like that would be the ideal because she's going to draw in people and then we can pump this new music so that's the goal and the thing is, they don't know that Miss Mississippi wants out just as, like she needs an excuse to get out of the house. So even though it might not be super beneficial to her to go on tour at this point, she wants to go on tour. She wants to get away from her boyfriend. And so she's at home and she's hiding pampers to make it look like they're out of them so that she has an excuse to get out of the house. And then <laughs> we go back to Andre. I didn't mean to laugh because he's there crying because of the loss but he's asked to stay there and to help carry the casket and he really does want to be there and then after that he bumps into autumn so they have a little moment and so you know he he wants to stay there and then when we see the actual funeral it's great because it's done the parade style so we've got all the bright neon green colors of everybody in the funeral and it's celebrated as a you know it's a celebration of life it's not a, a it's a sad event, but it's not one of those things where people are sitting around crying. They're, they're really trying to talk about him in a positive light and remember him happily and, you know, the whole parade in their honor. And I really liked that scene. It was really nice. But when we see Uncle Clifford and his grandmama talking, you already know it's a thing. So the grandma's, she's not trying to go to the funeral, but she's on TV asking Clifford to come watch it for her. They look, she's looking for somebody specific because she wants some chitlins. So she sends him on his way to go head on over there to get her a plate of chitlins. <laughs> the scenes between him and his grandmother are 
some of my favorites. I just think if Loretta Devine is in anything, it's going to be great. So luckily for Miss Mississippi, her plan works, at least temporarily, and she convinces her boyfriend to not go out for the Pampers to let her go out for them. And she's talking on the phone with Gidget, who's not there, and telling her that, you know, she got to go out of the house, she's lying, and bumps into Diamond, who's still very much upset with her. He won't forgive her. And so even though she's out enjoying her day, Moog gets killed because, you know, she bumped into Diamond and that whole situation still hurts. I still can't believe she pulled a gun on him, but... Eh. She's not thinking clearly. When we go back to Uncle Clifford, he he's, he goes to the house to get his plate of chitlins for his grandma. And Mayor Kyle shows up and just reminds him about how he wants to buy the property. And they have a discussion about the casinos. And then he's off. He really just showed up for the food and left. And I was like, that's so gangster. Him and his grandma get down like this. And I really feel the dynamic of their relationship. And once everyone leaves the house and it's just Andre there upset, he gets... um you know, an unexpected visitor, Corbin, with a stack of money on his doorstep to hire him as like a retainer because he knows of his his interactions with Autumn and he wants to use him to kind of sway Autumn to sell. And then at the very end of the episode, we see Mercedes and Autumn watching What's Love Got to Do With It? And Mercedes sees on Instagram the flyers for auditions at the paint. She gets livid, throws stuff. They have a little altercation and then at the very end Lil Murder gets a text from Miss Mississippi saying that she's in. So really just in this first episode we see that the, pow the power dynamics are all thrown off from what it was in the beginning of last season. The ones that were on top and doing the best are now like not doing so great. People are having to scramble and figure out how to make things work and everybody's doing it. Everybody on this show is definitely a fighter and they're going to figure out a way to make it happen. So it's, it's really cool seeing the how things have changed and it's nice seeing how they incorporated the the pandemic coming to an end into the show but for the tutorial uh, for our tutorial today we're going to do something that we saw mercedes do in the beginning of the episode in the car wash and it's a chopper it's one of the first like inverts that you're going to learn how to do so i figured we would start with that and it comes up throughout the show so we're going to work on that today so follow me to the poll okay so your chopper this is like the first invert you're probably going to work on and it can be challenging and it can feel very impossible, but I'm going to take you through some steps to help you prepare to do your chopper so that by the time you're actually trying it, you'll be ready to do it. Remember to stretch first. Honestly, this is the first uh, invert that people learn and they usually learn it wrong. Most people learn it by just throwing their bodies into it and then they gradually get the strength for it, but you want to do it the other way and build the strength for it first and then do the invert because when you do it that way then so many other things are like easily accessible to you and you limit your risk of injury okay so let's start with some standing prep called knee tucks so depending on where you are you might want to start with one leg first or maybe you can start with both legs so i'm going to show you what's going to happen so first you're going to come this is coming from my bicep grip so you're going to bring the pole to your armpit Bend your arm forward, elbow forward, about cheek height. Outside hand is gonna come on top of that. And you're gonna bring your hips in front of the pole and your legs are gonna be a little bit out in front of you. So I'll also show you from the side. So from here, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna try to bring both of my knees up by tucking my tailbone under. So you don't wanna jump into it, but you wanna use your strength to get into that position. So it's gonna look like this. Um, if you find yourself like rolling around out of it, it's because the squeeze isn't tight enough. So make sure you're really thinking about bringing your, your elbow and this bottom part of your arm in toward your body. The top arm is pulling down. If you can't do both knees at one time, you can try to do one at a time, but where there's a moment where they're both in the air. So for example, leg up, both off the ground, switch. So you can try it with the single legs first and then go to double knees 
Or instead of bringing both knees up bent, you could also try it with both legs straight. So that would be And this last time that I did it, I did it without my feet touching the ground. That's an, another uh, upgrade that you can do. So between your sets, don't let your feet go to the ground. Keep them elevated. That makes it a lot harder. Okay, let's take it to the floor. I'll pull myself down so the poles are in my armpit. I'm going to hug my elbow into my rib cage and squeeze in my top hand. It's going to come above that and I'm going to pull down. So I'm squeezing in with my bottom arm and pulling down with my top arm. From there, the action that's going to happen is I'm going to lift my knees. I'm going to tuck my tailbone and lift my hips. And then I'll open up into a straddle. So a good prep for that is bringing your angles together and think about bringing your knees up to the ceiling. What you're not going to do is just throw your legs back and use momentum. You're going to use your lower abs to curl your hips up and think about bringing your knees to the ceiling. So it's going to look like this. And it might not be a big movement, especially at first. So you don't want to do this. Well, I'm just throwing them back and my feet are going to the ceiling. See how my feet are coming up? What you want is your knees to come up. So let's practice the action. Knees out to the side and legs up. Now let's try it with the tuck. So you're gonna bring your hips up and down. Curling my tailbone and coming up. One more from the floor. We'll do it as if we would do it in the air. So your arm will come back, tilt back, lift your hips up. All right, so let's go back, straddle the hips. Tilt back, straddle the hips. So from the front angle, And don't forget to do both sides. So now that we've done our floor preps and we know what it feels like to tip back and also to open our legs up into a straddle, let's try it all together. Remember, what you don't want to do is just throw your head back. You want to keep your tailbone tucked, kind of that um, like a hollow body position. So don't just throw your head back. Keep your body controlled. Don't just jump into it. So let's try it all together. So it's going to look like this. So you want to reverse it. Knees in, open up, then come down with control. Also, you can try from a first level climb, and of course, you can also try on spin ball. Remember, be safe. So, let me know how you're finding the chopper and. Drop down, leave comments. I'll see you for the next tutorial.